Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all can be seated, amen. <laughs> amen. We praise God that everyone was safe um, throughout that storm. No loss of life. Amen. Well, let's not delay. I believe I heard from the Lord. Let's go to Mark chapter number four. Amen. There they are. Amen. Y'all probably wondering where the Women's Faith Home is. We had uh, booked some Airbnbs away from the ministry during the storm, and we um, did some extra days that we couldn't um, get reimbursed, so we let them enjoy. Amen. So they're on a little vacation. They're watching, though. They're tuning in. Hey, ladies. Bless you guys. You should see these places they, they're staying at. Oh, my God. I'm like, man, I want to go. <laughs> right, guys? Swimming pool, everything, man. Game rooms, all kinds of stuff. Amen. Mark chapter 4, uh, verses 35 through 41. We're going to look at it through the Amplified. The Bible says, on that same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. So leaving the crowd, they took with him just as he was in the boat, and other boats were with him. And a fierce windstorm began to blow, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern asleep with his head on the sailor's leather cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are about to die? And he got up and sternly rebuked the wind and the sea and said, Hush. Be stilled and muzzled. And the wind died down as if it had grown weary, and there was at once a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. Jesus said, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith and confidence in me? And they were feel, filled with great fear and said to each other, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to minister this morning on the title, Storm Proof. Storm Proof proof. Amen. Father, we just thank you all this morning, Lord, for your awesome uh, uh, protection on our lives, Father God, on our properties, Father God. And uh, Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to hear the word of God. Father God, we thank you for your hand of protection on this very building. Father God, that we're sitting in here right now, Father God, that no wind, uh, Father God, breached uh, the foundation, Father God, or the roof, Father God, and no uh, water was able to penetrate uh, through this building, Father God. So, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, that we are uh, here able to worship you and praise you and bless you, Father God, uh, in this place, Father. So, fa Father, have your way as I minister the word, speaking the lives and the situations. Father, give me the utterance uh, from on high to minister to your people, Father. I thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. amen. So today I want to talk about storms. Being a Christian does not mean you will not go through storms. Being a Christian ensures that you come out of the storm and the storm does not take you out. It's not a matter if you will go through a storm. It's a matter of when you go through a storm. Storm means a violent disturbance of the atmosphere with strong winds, which are usually followed by rain, thunder, lightning, or even sometimes snow. snow. We just came through a massive storm, but I want you to understand that there is no waste in God. He is always trying to teach us something, and he can use anything to get his wisdom across to us, even a storm. Now, this storm was not an isolated event. This is something that affected the whole state that we live in. As you turned on and you see the news, you've seen this big, massive thing on the, in the Gulf of Mexico that was coming to the state of Florida, amen? So this was not a storm that was, sometimes you can go through a storm, but it's an individual storm. But this was not an isolated storm. This was a storm that affected the very state that we live in, amen? Now listen to this. You can, you can hear a message, you can preach a message, but sometimes the Lord will allow you to live out a message, Amen. We're good at uh, preaching messages. We're good at hearing messages. But sometimes you don't even realize God is allowing you to live out a message right before your very eyes. I'm sure Job that had no idea 
that the storm that he was going through was going to be documented in heaven and that millions of sermons would be preached about Job's storm long after Job was gone to show the, the Lord's faithfulness at the beginning of the storm, in the middle of the storm, and that he's the God of the outcome of storms. Jesus even said, I come in the volume of the book to do what was written of me. Amen. That Jesus was walking out a specific script. I want you guys to know that we are, you are a part of the end time generation. And listen, I believe that anyone that's living in this time, that God knows that you have what it takes to deal with anything that could come and, and arise on planet Earth in this time. Amen. So listen, I want you to understand that you don't have to be intimidated by anything that comes on the horizon or in this in this life. Amen. Because you have something on the inside of you that, listen, will fortify your faith and you're going to come out on top. There is no storm that's going to take the people of God out. There is nothing designated in the in the schedule of hell that can come against the people of God that's going to take the people of God out. Listen, fortify yourself and understand who you're dealing with. Somebody say, I'm not going down. We are coming to a place where we're going to have to believe in God, the God of the Bible, and who he said he is. Amen. It's time out for just uh, hearing messages and preaching messages. Either he's the God of the Bible or not. Amen. I got many calls from my family, and listen, it was genuine concern, and that's fine, amen, and they're like, why are you not evacuating, amen, why are you not leaving, amen, we up here, amen, up north, amen, my sister out in California, and they're hearing the news, they're seeing the big blob in the Gulf of Mexico, and they say, why are you still at home, amen, because I got a witness in my spirit, amen, telling me that all is well, you don't have to vacate the state. Amen. I'll be a shield and buckler for you. I'm the God that protected you from the gunshot. I'm the God that protected you in the car accident. I'm the God that protected you when you almost OD'd. Amen. I am still the same God. And if I protected you when you were not serving me, how much more will I protect you when you're in covenant relationship with me? Amen. This is not the time for me to back up. This is time for me to show myself stronger than ever before. And Tony Samuel and the Lighthouse Freedom Center, I'm about to demonstrate my covenant in your life. The storm is an opportunity to see the faithfulness of Almighty God. Amen? Sometimes things happen in our lives, and I don't know why, but it, the Lord allows it to test our belief systems, to test the work of God in our lives to test our sermon, to test our message, to test our confession, to test our testimony. And what better thing to test the integrity of something than a storm? Pull up 1 Peter 4.12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which has taken place to test you. That is to test the quality of your faith as though something strange or unusual were happening to you. Amen? So God will allow things to come into our life to test the quality of your faith. You can't test anything without pressure. You can't test something without fire. You can't test something without res resistance. You will never know what you got until you go through a storm. You will never know what you're made of until you go through a storm. You will never have the, the work of God validated in your life until you have to walk through something. Look at your name and say, I'm going to pass this test. As the storm came through, I looked out my window, and I watched while trees were being tested for their strength. I saw trees that were big and strong come down, because the storm had a greater force than the roots of the tree. Now listen, don't think I'm trying to magnify a storm. But I want to tell you, if you'll work on the roots and the foundations of your life, storms will come and storms will go, but you will not go away. Amen? I don't know where that storm is at right now, but I know where I'm at. I know where you're at. Amen? 
And no matter how strong the wind blew and what tree it uprooted, it did not uproot you. Amen. You still came this morning to the house of God to bless the Lord. And the fact that you're here is showing that God is greater than the storm. The foundation that he built in your life is greater than Hurricane Milton. I said, Milton, it's time to bow down to the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Amen. Pull up Matthew 7, 24. Hmm. Jesus said, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken them to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine does not do them. He will be likened to a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. The house represents your life. The house represents your faith in God. Amen? Are, are, is, are you still alive? Do you still have faith in God? That means you got a good foundation. That's, that means you weren't just a hearer of the word, but you have been doers of the word. Amen? Amen? So you've been building on a solid foundation. Amen? Listen, storms don't stop us from doing the word. Amen? My, my wife said, well, what were you thinking when, when you seen everything in the, in the water? I said, I don't, I wasn't really thinking. I just went into a mode. It's almost like a, a, a switch hit, and I just went into, amen. <laughs> We're not running. We're not backing down. What needs to be done to keep the ship going, amen? The ship ain't going down. The ship is still up. Let's navigate this thing and get it to where it needs to go, amen? I don't got time to sit around and cry. I don't got a time to sit around and be in fear. God, listen, God ain't done yet. He ain't done with this ministry. He's not done with the faith home. He's not done with the people of this church. Let's get this thing done, get it fixed, and let's get going. I clicked into a mode. <laughs> As I read the passage that we opened up with, now I realize that this account was not really about the storm. It was not even about speaking to the storm. It was not about preserving a boat. It was, let, it was Jesus trying to show, are you letting storms affect your faith in God? Let me say it again. This, sto this story, this passage was not about, amen, because the disciples had no teaching about speaking to storms, amen? So it wasn't about speaking. It wasn't about the boat, amen, but the God that was sleeping, amen, that I, I believe because he said the Bible says he's the God that never sleeps or slumbers. So I, be, I believe he was sleeping and watching at the same time. He was sleeping and listening at the same time. God, through this storm, God was watching us. God was listening to us to see if our faith was going to be broke down by the sound of the wind, by the sound of the rain, by trees tumbling down. God was trying to see, was your faith going to stand strong, amen, or were you going to go down? God was watching. God was lit. Where was Jesus at when the storm? He was in the boat with them, amen. He never left them. But listen, don't mistake in the silence of God for an absence of God. The silence of God is just mean that you're under test. You're under a test. The teacher doesn't talk when there's a test going on. Let's see if all the teachings you've been getting, let's see if you've been listening. Let's see if you've been studying. Let's see if your prayer life has been fake or it's authentic. Let's see if you, if you got it. Pull up Psalms 112.7.8. And I, I want to reiterate that truth that being a Christian does not mean you're exempt from going through things. It does not mean that. In Psalms 112, 7, 8, the Bible says, He should not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is firmly fixed, trusting, leaning on, and being confident in the Lord. His heart is established, steady. He would not be afraid while he waits to see his desire established upon his adversaries. Somebody say it's a heart thing. His heart is firmly fixed. 
Amen. Everything else can be falling apart. Everything else can be swept away. But where is your heart fixed? Is it fixed in faith in God? Or is your heart getting swept away by the things that's happening in the natural? This storm came out of nowhere. It began to test the integrity of the boat of the disciples. But the biggest thing, it was testing the disciples' faith in God. They were not exempt from the winds, the rain, and the water began, listen to this, the water began to come into the boat. They were in a situation where everything around them was being damaged, amen? This is not about damaged things. This thing, this thing is about are you getting damaged by the storm, amen? I've seen things get damaged around here, amen? But that's not the deal. The question is, did you get damaged by the storm? This is not about the effects of the storm on the boat. It's about not letting the storm get inside of you. Let me say it again. This is not about the storm getting inside the boat. This is not letting the storm get inside of you. Amen? Amen. I, I thank God for my brother Victor. Amen. We, 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 we asked him. That whole field back there on the side of the church turned into a lake. Ducks were swimming on it. I think we might have even seen some fish. And then we found out that there was a busted pipe back there, amen, that was underwater where it was broken. And uh, Brother Lynch, he was away, amen, but he called Brother Victor, and Victor, Brother Victor came down, amen, in his flip-flops, amen, and stuck, got in the water, amen, a water up to here, amen, and was able to fix the leak, amen. Amen, I said... Then that's not it. We, we're done cleaning up the faith home for the day. Amen. I'm, in, I'm on the side of the building. I hear this swishing sound. Another pipe had busted. Amen. Some hit it and, and knocked the pipe. Here come Victor again. I'll fix it. No problem. Cap it off. Done. Amen. And we start, start seeing the waters recede. Amen. Amen. Listen, sometimes the most dedicated soldiers are not the one with the loud mouth. Sometimes the ones with the greatest commitment is not the ones with the haka shaka maka maka. Oh, Pastor Tom, we'll be praying for you. We'll be praying in tongues, amen, and, and that's it, amen, when well, you ain't going to see us. I believe this storm was not only a test for us to show where we're at, I honestly believe, for, for, and listen, there, there's some stuff I can't even preach it. I can't even talk about it from the pulpit because they probably flag it. But listen, guys, we are dealing with some darkness. And it's all connected to the, the, the root of all evil, which is the love of money. And these people will do things and engineer things to take people out to accomplish their objectives Amen. Of, of getting resources to bring, to bring more money in to their corporations. Amen. So we're dealing with some print. You want to talk about demons. That's the demons. Not this stuff thrown up in, in garbage cans. This is high stuff. The devil's like, you think I'm, that's where I'm working? You, you, you've under mess, underestimated me. Now listen, I want to give you a few points on the things we can learn from a storm. Listen to this first thing. Storms will reveal where you're at spiritually. Everybody here and those listening, you need to now evaluate yourself. How did you do? Amen. How did you do with the news? How did you do when the storm showed up? How did you do with the aftermath? Evaluate yourself. Where Honestly, where was I at? Did I freak out? Did I lose my mind? When I start seeing things that I, uh, 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 that I put faith in begin to crumble and fall apart, then I lose my faith in God. We got to begin to really evaluate, amen, where we were at spiritually, amen. Where were we shaking? And those are the areas we need to work on again because, amen, so, some can happen again. Number two, storms prepare you for your future. Listen to this. Once you go through a storm, you will be ready for future storms. I talked to some of my brothers and sisters from Puerto Rico, amen, and they told me that uh, Category 5 storms is a common thing in the Caribbean. And they were like, 
this is nothing, amen? We've been through this before, amen? We've seen houses wiped out. We've seen all this. So a lot of my brothers and sisters from the Caribbean that have been through storms, I've, I've seen looking at them, they weren't really shaking. They weren't really fr- freaking out. They were like, we're going to get through this, Pastor Tone. Don't worry about it. But once you go through a storm, amen, it will prepare you for future storms. Now listen to this. Storms will deepen your relationship and understanding of God. When the storm came, the disciples questioned the love and character of God. Don't you care that we're perishing? Evaluate yourself. Did you, was there any point in the storm where you began to question the love of God for your life? Did you begin to question, amen, the sovereignty of God in your life? Was there any part in the storm, amen, where your confident trust in the Lord began to break down and you began to question the character of Almighty God? What a charge. Don't you care about us? My God, I just came from planet heaven, amen, to planet earth, to be in this sin-filled earth, amen, to walk with you, to talk with you, to redeem you. Now you're going to think I'm going to change on you? Now just because a storm came out on the Gulf of Mexico, that's supposed to change my love for you? Just because you see stuff around you breaking apart, is that how you're measuring my love for you? Then it got quiet. <laughs> Actually, we got we to gotta ask ourselves. I got to ask myself, was there any area where I looked at like, <gasps> and began to question the character of God? Because I need to work on that. They let the storm drown out their history with God. They, it wiped everything, all the miracles Jesus did in their lives. They, they let one storm wipe out their history with God. They let the storm drown out what God had spoken to them previously. It's amazing how we can go through a storm and then we get spiritual amnesia and forget everything that God told us before the storm. We forget all the jams that we got out years ago, amen, and we go completely amnesia and forget about it and we begin to doubt God. We're going to the other side. See, sometimes we miss God because we're looking for him in the spectacular. And then what happens is when the devil does something spectacular, we miss what he said when it wasn't spectacular. The little, still, small voice. That level of communication has more, coming from God has more power than a raging, loud, uh, uh, land-wrecking storm. Amen? There's more power in God's whisper. That's why my family is saying, what are you doing here? But I heard the whisper of the Holy Ghost. Be still. And no, you're about to find out that I am God in your life. We had a sister tell us uh, when we were praying that she was watching the news of the, all the people leaving the state of Florida. And she just looked at it and turned away. And the Lord said, look again. And she looked again. And the Lord says, they don't know me. That's people that don't know me. Now, if he tell you to go, <laughs> go. <laughs> it could be Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Get out. I'm about to destroy this place. <laughs> if you hear that, go. <laughs> but if you don't hear that, just be still. We, we had a uh, situation where we used to live <laughs> out on uh, Big Ben, and uh, it was Hurricane Irma. And uh, that hurricane is supposed to be coming directly here. And, Lord, what do you want us to do? And the Lord said, don't do nothing. Just be still. So my neighbor, he comes across, what y'all doing? We're about to leave, amen. And I said, nah, I feel like we're supposed to stay. He said, you're crazy. 
So now God's going to protect us. Anyway, he jumped in his RV with his family and began to take off. Do you know that storm came and changed this course from us and started going on the course he was, he was going? <laughs> I remember when he got back, he said, man, we thought we were getting away from it. The thing turned and started coming right after us. I said, man, we were just chilling here, man, didn't lose, no power, amen. I'm sitting here watching TV, eating, amen, relaxing, man, praying, amen. But you hear the voice of God, and he tells you what to do. So to the world, that may seem crazy, but they don't know him. They don't know him. So we look ridiculous. We look crazy for not moving when a storm comes. I told, now listen, staff, don't get offended when I, I'm not tardy. I'm just using this example. So our, our staff, I give them full permission. If they don't feel comfortable, go. Amen? Go. But the captain can't leave the ship, so I can't. But some of them volunteer. No, we ain't leaving. We're going to stay too, Pastor Tom. All right. <laughs> Amen. Why y'all looking like that? I mean, honestly, my, my, my take on this, I mean, if it's time for me to go, it's time to go. Amen. If God can't protect me from the storm, what am I preaching? What I've been laying my life down for the, over 20 years believing in this God, if he cannot protect me from a, a, a storm that's coming off the Gulf of Mexico. Who am I believing? Do I, storms really come to find out, do you really believe the God of the Bible? Or is this just some fiction book? Is he your reality? Or is this some we come into his reality in church and then we leave out and go back into the world's reality? Is he your living reality? I don't like running from nothing anyways. I don't like running back and down from nothing. And so that, that in me, I don't like running, Amen. Just, I don't like it. I feel like I'm surrendering. I feel like I'm putting up the white flag. So I don't like running. So like I said, unless God tells you, then, then go for it. So don't let the storm wipe out your relationship with God. It can wipe everything else out, but don't let it wipe out your relationship with God. Listen to this. A storm will throw off your routine. How many people's routines got thrown off by the storm? I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm not able to pray how I used to pray. I mean, I, I'm waking up, quick prayer, running over here. Amen. My whole routine got interrupted by the storm. So sometimes storms come to interrupt our routine. Now, listen to this. It will interrupt your schedule, and it will challenge and remove things that we have been leaning on, and it will force us to make adjustments to realign and lean completely and only on God. Now, listen, I have a prayer life, but ultimately I'm leaning on God. Amen. I, I mean, I fast. Amen. I pray. I study the word, but ultimately I'm leaning and trusting on God, not my prayer life, not my confession, not my Bible study. Amen. I'm leaning on God. So storms come to interrupt your schedule and your routine to shake up the things that you've been putting trust in. To show that, Tony, I can support you even when you don't get an hour prayer time in. That I can be God in your life, amen, even when you didn't get time to study. I can be God in your life even when the power goes down and you can't feed your spirit, man, with faith teachings. So a storm will reveal... If you've been depending on your routine, it will interrupt, bring an interruption. And now you, it will, what it'll do it make you, because you know what can happen? When you begin to think it's on your prayer life, it breeds self-righteousness. And you leave the righteousness of God and you depend on your righteousness. And now you become condemning and judgmental to people that don't have the spiritual level that you have. So God sometimes will allow a storm to make you know it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. Not you, man. Not you, lady. <laughs>
A storm will cause you to walk through things that make no sense in the natural. But in the spirit, they make perfect sense. How could I be going through this with Jesus on my boat? This makes no sense in the natural. But in the spirit, it makes perfect sense. Somebody say, why not me? Don't say, why me? Say, why not me? This makes perfect sense. Listen to this. Storms reveal and give you an understanding of the people around you. Mm -mm. When you go through a storm, you really find out who is really for you, not just in word, but in action. I took a dip. I'm, I'm Pastor Tone. I'm here for you. Thick and thin, I'm your, the storm come, I don't hear nothing. Wow, when we need you the most, where you at? I thought you were my friend. I thought you cared about this church. I thought you cared about this ministry. And then there were crickets. See, I'm kingdom minded. It's not what the kingdom can do for me. It's what I can do for the kingdom. Ain't no way I'm we sitting home and my, my church is under attack. Uh, Marlo and Saul drove through a flood of water to come here to check on us. The day after the storm, we're like, what are they doing here? They're like, we just wanted to check. We just couldn't. I want to make sure everything's all right around here. You know, people call me, text me. I got a lot, a lot of that people checking on us. So everybody couldn't make it physically, but people were concerned. Amen. But a storm will give you an understanding of the people around you. Amen. When you go through the storm, you'll find out who really is for you, not just in word, but in action. Pull up Proverbs 18:24. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. I posted that video on uh, Facebook. <laughs> My cousin up north, I'm encouraging everybody. He's not, he, he, he's saved, but he need some more cooking, amen. <laughs> Still half cooked, amen. But he was like, he put, put on my my book because I got a cousin that lives in uh, Orlando, and he was like, go to Carla's house, go to Carla's house. And I'm like, look at my cousin. He barely called him, but at least he's he's trying to, you know, where he's at to try to sit, do some help. And he was the first one that called me. Um, what morning was it? Thursday morning. Thursday morning. It woke me up. Don't, because he drives trucks. He's like. You all right? You all right? You all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, man. You, I'm just getting up, man. I'm like, okay, okay. Why do you go to Carl? Man, we were up here watching this thing, Category 5, man. All we see is this big blob on the TV. I'm like, my, my cousin's there. Hey, man, I mean, he got to get out of there. The blob. Yo, you should have seen us. We were like that. The wind started blowing. We walked outside. I started getting mad. I said, get out of here. What are you doing here this long? Go. Get out of here. Milton, get out of here in Jesus' name. Go now. I lost my voice at one point. Then I came back and I felt an unction, uh, like a second gear kicked in. And we, I, I feel that thing now. We're going to speak to this thing. We're not going to sit here and just be victims. We're going to speak to this thing. We're going to resist the devil and see this thing flee from this area. I'm not going to sit here like a sitting duck. Amen. I'm going to speak to this thing. Pull up Galatians 6 2. Listen to this. Love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one as we carry each other's troubles. Yo, the gatekeepers too, man. They came out here. 
And man, started picking up all day. Bought shop vacs. And I'm like, I mean, they're pulling these giant limbs, dragging them. I mean, I'm like, walking in water. I mean, all kind. I'm like, look at these young people. Wait, wait, wait. Catalyst was included too. Tati and Russell came. Tati as well. and Russell came. And Christian. Yeah, I'm like, look at these. Sometimes there's, there's some, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's not the people you think, but you find out when you your something happens, you find out by who shows up. Look at your name and say, I've miscalculated. There's some relationships you thought was all that, but this storm revealed where they're really at. God allows this so to expose, amen, who, who you've been thinking you was your buddy. Now you're going to find out they weren't really your buddy. Storms, I realize, now can bring people together. Or it separates people. You must learn from the response of the people around you. Somebody say, I got to learn now. I learned a lot. I have learned a lot through this. The Lord is speaking to me the whole time. And things I thought was solid, I found out I've been wrong. There was a reason I believe the faith home had to stay back to bring the revelation so we won't be deceived. Somebody say restoration. Now, I would not give this message justice if I didn't tell you about the God of restoration. As you begin to look at the Bible and the history of the nation of Israel, the history of the people of God, many, 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 many times there was devastation that came to the nation of Israel where their temple was destroyed. They were relocated out and exiled out of their homeland. But there was always a promise of restoration where God would come back around and get things back on track. So I want to build your faith now that God is in the process after the storm to initiate restoration. Let me say it again. After the storm, God steps in and initiates his restoration plan. This is not Geico. This is not progressive. This is not nationwide. This is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's been restoring before those companies ever existed. The storm brings devastation, but God brings restoration. Restoration means to return something or someone to its original state or to make it something new again. Sure, we go through things and we see things devastated, but God always brings it back bigger and better. Me and Pastor Ben were reminiscing about the year that this building uh, burnt to the ground. And the ministry at that time was, uh, the church wasn't here. We were um, in the chapel. That's where we had church. And the faith, it was a dual function. The faith home used it, but we had uh, services there. And uh, Bishop realized that, man, we're outgrowing this place. We need to build another building. We even took shovels because we were going to expand the chapel uh, behind the chapel, expand it out that way. And we did a whole ceremony of sticking shovels into the ground, hard hats, all this stuff, and trying to draw plans to do this. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a fire comes, amen, starts from the back of the warehouse. We used to burn stuff out here. We don't do it no more. Amen. Anyway, uh, some... Guy had it too close to the warehouse, and this warehouse used to be full of furniture. So it caught uh, some couches on fire, and it just it was moving too fast. So we had to sit back on the outside praying and just watching this building burn to the ground. And I remember Bishop said, guys, let's pray that the Lord will save the office, that we need all our supplies, our files, um, our computers on the ministry. If we lose that, amen, we, we, it's going to really set us back. 
and God made sure that that fire did not breach the office. So we're able to protect the office. Amen. So Bishop, amen, is walking through this very building right here with Apostle Louis Captavilla and kind of devastated trying to find out. And, and Apostle gave him the word. He said, you should build a church right here. It's like, what? Right in the midst of ashes, the restoration of God began to come and said, you need to build on the same place where the devastation took place. Amen. Because I believe, amen, that when you are restored with the devil destroyed, amen, it shows victory, I mean, from the people of God. And that what the devil sent to destroy us cannot take us out. So this very church is an illustration, a revelation of the restoration power of Almighty God. Even the beam right here, Bishop said, let's keep this beam. This beam right here was one of the original beams. And if you see it, it's bent because it got so hot in this building with the fire raging, it burnt that beam. Somebody say restoration. So guess what? We... We built, and then all, all of a sudden, it was like a sequence of events happened. It was like, oh, we got in, a bishop got in contact with a guy named Todd Simi. He knew a guy that built churches, amen, and these, uh, these, these, uh, these types of buildings, these uh, metal frame buildings got in contact with him and then came up with an idea, we still need a warehouse, no problem. We can expand it off the existing foundation and make it easy. Now I can do a church and a new warehouse. Y'all didn't get that. So we got blessed, I would look like devastation, that we got blessed with a new church and a brand new warehouse. See, I, we, we got too much history with God to begin to doubt God now. The promise of restoration. We go through things. It may be devastated, but God is going to give us beauty for ashes. He's going to bring it back. Pull up Amos 9, 14 through 15. Two, two scriptures. Listen to this. I will bring my exiled people of Israel back from distant lands, and they will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them again. They will plant vineyards and gardens, and they will eat their crops and drink their wine. Old Testament. <laughs> Kool-Aid, amen. Fruit drink. <laughs> smoothie. <laughs> they drink their smoothie. Wine. <laughs> I will firmly plant them there in their own land, and they will never again be uprooted from the land I've given them, says the Lord your God. Somebody say, build again. God didn't have them run. He said, rebuild it. Put it back. Pull up Joel 2.21, last scripture. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't be afraid, O land. Be glad now and rejoice. For the Lord has done great things. Don't be afraid, you animals of the field. For the wilderness and pastures will soon be green. The trees will again be filled with the fruit, fig trees, and grapevines will be loaded down once more. Rejoice, you people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. One more, the autumn rain, fall, will, rain will come as well as the rains of spring. The threshing floors will again be piled high with grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locust, the hopping locust, and stripping locust, and the cutting locust. It was all I who sent this destroying army against you. Once again, you will have all the food you want, and you will praise the Lord your God who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. Then you will know that I am among my people, Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. Never again will my people be disgraced.
If I didn't ever go through anything, how would I know God exists? If everything in my life was perfect, what would validate the existence of God, the deliverance of God, the blessing of God, the faithfulness of God? If I, there, there has to be, that's why, how do you know that God, Jehovah wrote, he's a healer? Because he healed you of sickness. Nobody can tell Miss LaDonna now that he's not a healer because she had sickness and now she cried out to the God that heals and he took sickness and disease out of her body. How would I know that God can deliver you from alcohol and drugs and generational curses and every demonic stronghold of the enemy unless he did it? This church is going deeper in God. Let me say it again. This church, the God told me, they said, said, listen, this thing, your depth has gone so much deeper now. You're, you're, going, you're going deeper now. And it's not, the natural is an illustration of the spirit. So, so whatever the devil happens in the natural is an illustration of the spirit. So if you are able to handle a category five in the natural, you can handle a category five in the spirit. If you can handle something that hit a whole state, amen, you can handle it in your own life. It hit the whole state, and God saw us through it. We're still alive. You still got your house. You still got your car. Praise the Lord. You have not lost your faith in God. Out of all the things you can do, you came to church on Sunday morning to bless the Lord. Do you, do you guys know the day we had the fire was a Wednesday, and that night we still had church? The fire marshal was like, you're going to have what? Bishop said, we're going to praise the Lord our God. In that chapel, looking through the window at a burnt-down building, we're going to praise the Lord our God. And look what God did. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah.